Good morning, Intro to 2D. Um, I just wanted to take a few minutes today on your flex day to talk about another version of a portrait that we are going to be exploring. And we are looking specifically at the artist David Hockney and his techniques for using um, what he calls is a photo joiner. Now, he is an English painter and photographer. Um, a lot of people in art history associate him with um, the art movement of pop art around the 60s, and he is considered to be one of the most influential British artists of the 20th century. Um, but in the early 80s, he really started exploring a technique called joiners, which you can see an example of right here. Now for this project, um, you guys are going to be picking either yourself or somebody else to create a joiner, if you will. You're gonna be kind of emulating David Hockney's style. Um, originally, some of his images were of Polaroids, so you can see that here, they're individual squares comprised um, the composition, but you can also see that there's a little bit of a surreal element too in that the fact that things don't exactly match up in scale or in actual shape. So there's a little bit of distortion that he plays around with, which I think is really interesting. Um, he took images of the same subject matter over and over again, but from different angles and different perspectives. And this is really um, similar to cubism. So if we look here, we have Cezanne. Um, he was really notable for mostly his still lives, but you can see how he kind of breaks up these images into um, almost more flattened geometric planes. You can see that back here in the wall, especially um, even in the figures a bit. Cezanne actually influenced Picasso over here. You can see uh, two of Picasso's images. And again, you can really see um, how Picasso is breaking things down into uh, really flat geometric kinds of planes. Well, you can then see Picasso's influence on Hockney, that, that one simple subject matter, but broken up into different planes and kind of looking at it from some different angles. Um, joiners actually occurred as an accident. Um, late 60s photographers were using wide angle lenses to take pictures, um, but Hockney really didn't like these kind of photographs because they were always um, very distorted. And so actually um, this accident occurred when he was trying to paint um, this scene of a living room. Um, he ended up taking a lot of pictures, Polaroids, of the living room and glued them all together um, to, to help be kind of a photo reference of this uh, space. But what resulted was an actual... Um, actually very interesting composition. And again, you can see in this image, um, it's a bit distorted. Um, he's got the images repeated over and over again and layered together. Um, you can kind of see how flattened and geometric a lot of the images are. Um, but he really was excited about this because it seemed to create a narrative uh, for the viewer walking through the room. I'm going to show you a couple more. Um, this is one of the Grand Canyon, and he has a quote that said, to photograph the unphotographable, which is to say space. There is no question that the thrill of standing on that rim of the Grand Canyon is spatial. It is the biggest space you can look out over that has an edge. And so he was really um, intrigued by this uh, use of space and to create the illusion of space. But I also start to see how interesting it is. Um, the overlays, he does have a few little gaps here and there of, of negative space, but it exceeds the typical rectangular or square parameter that we are used to with a photograph. And we see that especially in this next one. Um, and he says, when you put one piece of paper on top of another, you put two pieces of time together and therefore make a space. So by, by uh, overlapping and creating um, different segments of time, you're making a space. And then he says, you realize time and space are actually the same thing. So when you look at this composition, it's got kind of this rounded edge up here and you can see he's 
this one is more linear. You can see kind of these strips. They kind of remind me of paint strips, actually, um, where he is arranging the multiple views of that object. You can see how the shadow changes here. Um, even the, the color, it seems like it's was taken at maybe different times of the day. Over here, it seems a little bit um, less sunny. This part seems a little bit warmer and more sunny. We'll look at a couple others. Now, um, the one on the right is actually David Hockney. And you can see again that untraditional edge. And then the one on the left is um, a contemporary artist that I found, and I'm sorry, I don't know the name of them. But I really want you to think about who you are going to take a picture of and what is their setting. You know, this guy, it looks like, you know, he's kind of just looking out a window. It's more um, scenic. He's kind of con contemplative, whereas this person looks like maybe a student. They're going to school. You can see um, their clothes are kind of mismatched and all the gear that they're um, bringing together their face is a little bit out of proportion. And we'll look at the next one. These both are David Hockney as well. Um, so do you want to really think about a space? Obviously, there still has to be a figurative element or a portrait element because that's what we're studying. But this one seems to be really more about the space and the landscape around it and then the person within. Whereas this one, they're really more up close of a specific person and they've looked at that person and taken multiple pictures from different angles. So the left side of the face and the right side, you can see right here, the nose and the mouth are quite enlarged and they're just overlapping quite a bit. Here's another one that is definitely more about space, but again, it would be fulfilling the criteria because there is still a figurative element there. Um, you can see the indicator of um, another person even here in the foreground with the hand and the feet extended, maybe they're reading also. Um, so you need to pick one or the other, one that you're either gonna be closer up of the face and of the person, or if you wanna actually describe the space a little bit more. Um, and here is another one where there's actually a group of people. I've got a couple of contemporary artists that you can look up as well. Um, who kind of play around with this same idea of a joiner. This one um, definitely relies heavily on the circle and it, it's almost as if they are using the same image and just enlarging it maybe 10% each time and kind of rotating that. This one, the same person again, but you can see multiple angles. You've got the nose repeated several times or the mouth or the eyes. So there's a couple of artists that you can look at in terms of getting started, choose somebody to photograph. It could be yourself. Maybe you already have some pictures that you've taken. Um, and everyone should have access to either um, a camera phone or, um, again, you can use pictures that have already been taken. Um, you're really going to have two ways to do this. If you look at my bottom bullet point, you can do this digitally. So some of you might prefer to do this in Microsoft Word or um, in Photoshop. And some of you guys don't know Photoshop yet, that's fine. We're gonna be learning that as our next project. Or some of you might really like the tactileness of physically um, using scissors and glue and being able to play around with things. But I really want you to think about who you're gonna choose, what's their story? How are you gonna show this? Are you gonna create more of a portrait um, where you're focusing more on the face or the figure, or do you want to have something more like we looked at the examples of them actually being within a space and a scene? Um, you can either create a grid, so think about that initial image um, of David Hockney using the, the square Polaroids, and it was the same um, shape of figures, or the same shape of picture over and over again, or the images that we've seen more recently with all the different overlapping images and the irregular edge. Um, it's your choice if it's black or white or color. Um, natural lighting is always best because you'll get um, some more dramatic shadows. So really want you to think about that. I have a couple of student examples to show you that were from last semester. And uh, actually all three of these people tried to focus more on um, the person within the space. So you can see this one, they're outside, they're doing their little yoga pose. It's kind of neat to see some of the background with the trees and again, the irregular edge. 
Um, and these two people actually took their pictures and then just printed them out here in school and in class assembled them. So here's another one. And then I'll click on the last one. This one they did in Microsoft Word. And again, trying to create kind of a scene and a space, but they did this all digitally. And you can see some of the variations of where they're, they're overlapping, but that nice irregular edge. So for today's e-learning, you are simply figuring out your plan. Who are you going to choose? What's their story? And figuring out um, whether or not you're going to do this digitally or in Photoshop. Um, please see the rest of my instructions on your Canvas page um, to finish up what is due for class. Thank you.